Yes! <laughs> All right, welcome in. It's been a minute. We're observing consciousness. And welcome in to our friends and family and our spirit guides and our loved ones and our ancestors and our animal totems and all of it, all the fun <laughs> stuff that we, we're welcoming universal source all as one. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying some of the binary beats and the crystal bowls from Alethea and Ian that we've been putting up, DJ's been putting up. And... Um, we just wanted to start with a nice, big, deep inhale. <sighs> and a nice, big, clearing sigh out right through the heart space. And hopefully you'll be joining this breath with us now. And we'll take another nice, deep inhale. <sighs> and a big, clearing sigh out right through the heart. We always want to come from the heart space and um, be the most authentic selves we can be. Um, with each other and with you and we just also wanted to take this moment to send some love some deep love and some high vibrational frequencies to the whole entire planet there's been so much shifting going on and the energy is really becoming intensified and we really feel it and I think a lot of you might be feeling it as well. So we just wanted to take this moment to collectively send the highest divine frequency of love and forgiveness to every single part of the planet, to all who may be suffering right now. Sending light into those spaces where gray, black lower frequency energy might be lingering and this is all through non-judgment we're not trying to judge it we're just observing it in a neutral space but we would like to send it that higher frequency of love and forgiveness in order to transmute some of that energy so that we don't have to continue suffering there's no reason for us to continue suffering or anyone here to continue suffering. We know we all have choices. But we also believe that the evolution of this planet is coming into this Aquarian age and we would like to see um, more love and peace, peaceful experiences on earth for all of us because we know how suffering hurts. And uh, no one needs to be suffering to that degree anymore. I think we're raising our collective consciousness. So we're just taking this minute between the three of us and all of you to send our light into those places and spaces, just helping to clear it out and transmute it from the planet for the planet too. Sending, sending that up into the sun, any heavier frequencies that no longer serve our highest good or the highest good for all. And the sun just kind of transmutes that back into light energy. <sighs> Thank you guys. I just saw a big green emerald heart. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> it was buzzy. It was good. It was good. It was good. It just feels like important work right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had a lot of clients lately, you know, saying that they feel just very, like, much empath, you know, clients. Mm -hmm. and Which is, like, all of them right now. Mm -hmm. But just saying, you know, how they're feeling things so much. And it's just, like, it's amplifying, you know. Things are just... And I keep telling them it's 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 rushing both ways. It's rushing to the lower and the higher at the same time. Everything's just kind of accelerating energetically. So it is it's wild. <laughs> I totally have experiencing that. Have been experiencing that polarity. And I was just talking about that the other day. I think with you, and maybe you too. How like it's like on one end, my life is like getting so light, and like and and the things that I some of the things I dreamed of, I can see them coming in, you know, like with us and what we're doing mm -hmm. together. And then also the deepest, darkest, 
It's like, I sent you that Carl Jung quote, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. What was that quote? I can't remember it right now. I've got to look it up. Google. Let's <laughs> look it up real quick. Google. Yeah, yeah go ahead and look it up. We'll just what, what is that up. with the polarities? What do you think about that, DJ? Like, what is the higher, the higher, the deeper, the darker? I think that, I don't know for sure, but I'll, I'll, my, I'll take, my, take a crack at it and say that... <clears throat> I think the the more like your your own vibration, the more you vibrate, the lower vibration you have is like that's that's a polarity. You're pulling yourself that way, and then mm. when you when you have these higher, like where you're vibrating at a higher level, you feel more love in your life. You're having a good time with friends and mm. stuff like that. That that's like, and I don't know that for sure. It's like what's drawing it. If it's something else in the universe, like mm. I, I'm just I'm tuned into it. I don't I don't necessarily understand all of the mm. like. What are the what are the effects? It's like sometimes I feel like they're my thoughts that affect me, and the other times I'm, I feel like I'm just getting something from somebody else. Like mm. you know, hanging out with somebody, and their like their energy is a lower them. vibrating energy, mm -hmm. and it's like you know, you you take on some of that just by listening, and then you start thinking a little bit the way they were thinking and talking, and you're like working that stuff through. That lowers your vibration if it's a bunch of you know shitty stuff for better lack of better yeah. words. But if it's like these people, you know, somebody comes up, and I have a lot of these conversations where it's sharing love just like man I've, i love hanging out with you it's like it's gr great to see you again like i had a lot of that this weekend where it was just like really yeah. good times like genuine laughter and mm -hmm. stuff like that dude that raised my vibration personally i just i, I like would walk away sometimes like, I goosebumps love it. Yeah. Like, dude i just like i, I love had this i have that too even like two days ago i had a fairly new client it was the second time i worked on her and i've been doing a lot of energy work and at the end she was just like you know just so grateful and like you're a magic woman and She's like, I'm just, I'm trying not to cry. And then she just started crying a lot and like hugging and like, just like the gratitude that, you know, you feel it. It's just, it beefs each other up. And when she left, same thing, just like goosebumps and just feeling really buzzy and like happy. It's like, it's it like so better good. than drugs, man. It, dude, it feels <laughs> so good yeah. to help other people. It really yeah. does. Like, it does. It's probably it does. one of the best feelings that you It can. is the best. Yeah, that you can you can feel it's just like when you help somebody that I just genuine I just want to help I don't expect mm -hmm. anything back, and that exchange of energy like you're not even really an exchange you're giving you're just mm -hmm. giving and there's like when somebody walks away mm -hmm. with appreciation and gratitude like that, yeah you couldn't make me feel any better. I mean, it's, Which is like also indicative that like you need to be the recipient of it too you know because yeah. a lot of people mm -hmm. that give that to people all the time it's a one way. They don't allow themselves to be vulnerable yeah. enough to like receive that. That's you know so interesting. I was uh, I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine, and he was going through like he's he's one of these guys that you know he shares. He doesn't he he's not really a you know he doesn't hoard things to himself. Mm -hmm. He's got it, and you need mm -hmm. it. He'll want it. He'll share it with you. And he's he, he's going to this conversation about what's the you know the difference between givers and takers. And I didn't really I didn't really put a lot of thought into the difference between a giver and a taker. I said, no, what is it? He says, givers have a limit to what they'll give and takers have no limit. And I was like, mm -hmm. I wrestled with that a little bit. That's like, I didn't necessarily just agree outright mm -hmm. with it because personally, like, I don't, when I'm giving, uh, you know, I share a lot of my things and it's like, I, I honestly, I, I don't have an attachment to things. Like, I, I think I talked to you guys about losing everything to fire mm -hmm. two times in my life. Yeah. And I, like, things don't really matter to me. And giving my time feels really good to me, you know, when I'm doing something I want to help with. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm being asked to help, I'm like, yeah, I'll give you a hand. And they, like, the they're gratitude, it's like, those things, uh, fuck, I forgot. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Hold on, let me see if I wrap this up. I'll edit this out. I, uh, I had a thought about oh, that, too. Go it was, ahead. yeah, it was, um, so... In that difference between givers and takers, when I'm when I'm mm. when I'm giving, I just give to give, and so I don't I don't necessarily see it the same way. When I when I give, I just give, and, mm. and my limit to giving is wherever it is for me. Like if I want to give, then I give, mm. but if I don't want to, then I don't volunteer it. Mm -hmm. I don't feel obligated to volunteer it. Mm -hmm. So it's just something that it's for me to give. Yeah, you know, nobody. It's not their you know the takers are the people. That, they only take if I offer it to them. And then mm -hmm. They take, and then they're like, if they ask and I don't want to, I don't want to share. I don't want to do whatever I'm doing. It's like then it's just, oh, no, I don't have any. Yeah. It's, you know, it doesn't need to be anything like a big deal. Right. And so I don't know if I, I don't know if I necessarily agree, but I did, I like internalized that in givers and takers. And it's like, you know, maybe, maybe that is some of the difference, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I necessarily agree with that for myself. It's like, uh, when I give, I'm just giving to give. And I, yeah. I probably spend a lot more time giving than I do like taking or 
I think like like stuff. the yeah. thought is like takers can be like an endless hole. Give them an yeah, instant. They, they, <laughs> yeah. they take a mile. Yeah. That's the, well, that's the same thing that he was saying basically. Yeah. It's like they have no limits, so right. they are that bottomless pit. It, it kind of makes sense, you know, because they're essentially feeding off another source of energy instead of like finding the source of energy within themselves where it's like I can find this I can connect to my own energy and that's how I can pass on energy or amplify someone else's mm -hmm. energy when I'm working on them so I charge up I've learned how to charge up within myself instead of charging from an external place right which sometimes I still slip into like getting energy from the drama mm -hmm. or from the negativity or from other sources that I used to think that's where I'm getting energy from, like outside of myself so much. It's always, if it's always outside of yourself, it's an endless, instead of ever learning how to charge yourself mm -hmm. at some point, which thank God, mm -hmm. you know, God wanted me to see. So um, should we go over, talk about, catch up, what we've been doing? Yes, good idea, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been off for a couple weeks. Um, Alethea had her show, her big Halloween show, which was amazing, and we had that um, eclipse, that big eclipse energy. On the same day. Uh, yes, awesome. on the same day, and then we just had a lot going on, so... We, we all were... got together and did the our first meditation healing yes, circle. that's Sound true. Bath. Yeah, Sound that bath. Was, that, so the, and that video is up up on the YouTube page, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to check it out. Um, that was pretty, that was pretty magical. Like, it was cool. Out, out in the middle of a horse pasture, um, horses were milling around behind us, we had a couple dogs were out there just sharing good energy, and it was like, it was, it was really good. And yeah. That was, that was Alethea's first yoga session. That it she was, was like, it was the first horse. time I taught yoga, and um, the first time I properly led a meditation, which like was, yeah. as well. It was, it was like a, a combination one, one, one. of three amazing things. Yeah. <laughs> one, 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 three, three, three. Uh -huh. <laughs> So is there anything, uh, anything to talk about numbers. with the horse show? Uh, the horse show, we have, like, usually around the holidays, we're just having some downtime, but we have um, some shows coming up this spring in Vegas. We usually headline Pirate Fest, so that's the um, third weekend of March. And then we're doing another big show out at our ranch on March 30th. Um, which should be a pretty big event. They're getting bigger, and yeah, they are. Yeah, the, there's like, there was like it was hard, not hard to find parking because you guys where you guys live out. Like, yeah. Like, there's parking all around, but it was like you were long ass ways from the house. You to, were hiking. To, yeah. There's there's a lot of long walks going in there. And Gladius, it was, that was pretty uh, Gladius is kind of like the Vegas underground mm -hmm. cult. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't know. It's like. It's mm -hmm. if you know you know, and you should come to our shows. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty. They are pretty <laughs> amazing. You're, you're talking about like Cirque du Soleil <sighs> tricks and acrobats off the back of horses, like a guy standing on the back of two horses, which they call Roman riding, and then picking somebody up and hoisting him over his head <laughs> at the, with one arm while he's riding on horses with his legs like you know they're the shock absorbers for all this weight. Dude, I mean, and sometimes he, filming like a TikTok with the other hand. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty miraculous. <laughs> You guys are uh, just a bright beam of light right there in the community that you bring together, too, at the ranch. It's cool. It's cool. And so we've been uh, talking this year about, like, how we want to make things better and kind of have Gladius be able to generate more income so we can actually just produce our own shows locally and stop trying to find venues to bring us in. Um, so one of the things that we came up with is I'm going to start doing yoga out with our horses um, which is a beautiful place to do it outside under the sun next so to the horses amazing. and um, those classes are starting this Friday December 1st which might already be passed when this podcast comes out but they're going to be 10 dates in December into January 1st and we have them up on the Gladius the show website and our Instagram and Facebook as well as my massage by Alethea and we'll put a, I'll put one of the schedules up on the website cool and we'll yeah, there, and um, we'll be joining together for another um, collective group healing yes. meditation thing um, in, to, in the new year. Yeah. yeah. And then you got, we got January 1st, you're going to do a, so these, each one of the sessions that you're mm -hmm. doing leading up to January 1st, I think you've got like two, what are your, what's your schedule? You've got a Monday to Friday? There, there are a lot of Mondays and Fridays, every Monday, and then um, some Fridays, two to three, and then Saturday. There's two Saturdays in December, um, 9 to 10 a.m. Obviously weather pending, but we do have a sign-up sheet where I can communicate with people if there's 
if the weather gets cray cray. Mm-hmm. Where's the and where's the sign up sheet at? It's gonna be on um, Gladius the Show Facebook and Instagram, as well as the Gladius the Show dot net website and uh, Massage by Alethea Instagram and Facebook. All right. All the awesome. Links. And then so on the, the Saturday of the first the first of the year, you're gonna be doing a longer meditation. So each one of those are like an hour long. I think it's like a Wednesday, isn't it? Just January first. <laughs> Let's see. So you and then that one will be like an hour and a half long. It'll be a little more meditation. Yeah, involved, January first so. is a Monday. So that Monday will be um, like one of those group collective cool. sound healing and Yay. all that. And will will so, be joining us to play some guitar that day? Yes, I'll don't, let him know. Don't want to miss that. <laughs> <laughs> we no. didn't actually rehearse anything for the sound. I was like, oh, babe, I should get my bowls out and we should like kind of go over. He's like, yeah, yeah, we should, and then. And then we were just like, you know what? Like, fuck it. We just need to you like feel it. it, you know? And it's the same thing with the yoga class is like, my brain is like, uh, you're not ready. You don't have, you don't, you're not ready to teach. You can't. Um, but, but spirit keeps telling me otherwise. And I made a pact with myself mm-hmm. to listen to that. Mm-hmm. So I'm starting the yoga classes Ooh. and um, I don't know what's going to come out, but it's going to be good. <laughs> I love that idea. Yeah. I love that idea, yeah, because it, my brain can stop me so much. Always, yeah. And if yeah. You, I feel like if you make the pact, it's like, what would Jesus do? I'm like, what would Alethea's higher self do? That's oh, what I yeah. ask myself. You know, you know that... Um, what would my higher self do? Yeah, that's so the difference that. The difference between, like, ego and soul. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, your ego, it, it's lower vibrating. It's very attached to what's going on here. And soul mm-hmm. is, like, up here. It's, it's more attached to what's going on here. Mm-hmm. It's like... I almost look at it like your brain is a computer and it's like got two computer systems within it. It's like got an ego computer system, which mm-hmm. controls the body wholly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's got like a soul computer system, which is experiencing life the same exact way as the ego, except has no controls of the body. It can only like send messages and try to get, try to get through to you. Mm-hmm. And the, the messages come through just like thoughts. Mm-hmm. So they sound like your thoughts and you're like, sometimes, you know, sometimes your ego has a thought and you're like, eh, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's, it, the egos can be self-destructive sometimes. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but the soul comes okay. through and, and the soul's not giving you self-destructive thoughts. Like you're, you know, your, your ego is what's going, I don't know, I don't know. And it's like the soul is going, do it, like yeah. get on this. You're going to like, I'm yeah. just telling you there's something good is coming out of this. It's like getting out of that lower vibrating place yeah. and going up to that higher vibrating place and just like just going with what your heart says to do. And what wow. would what would our lives be like if all of our decisions were made from there? You know, and and a lot of cuz I try to I teach this to my clients too and mm-hmm. it's uh a lot of people like ask like how do I know? But for me the 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 thoughts and the downloads and the the ideas from spirit, they feel like more exciting. Mm. Like fluttery kind yeah, of, yeah. yeah. Like, like, and the brain ones, yeah, goosebumps, goosebumps stuff come like along that. Sometimes when you're like, oh, that's, and you're like, but, and something's like, and then your brain's ready. like, oh no, you're not ready, or you don't have enough money to. That's do ego, that. right? That's your, ego. Your ego is is connected so much to this physical <sighs> space right here. And all the little things that go into making mm-hmm. it, like make decisions and feel a certain ways and watch certain things. It's like, if you can get yourself out of your ego space yeah, and it's teach like, your ego to be more like your soul. Teach it to you, be. Yes. Well, it yeah, right. there's, a lot of, there's a lot of negativity that about, oh, like. Oh, that makes so much know, sense. If you think about the brain, the way the brain operates zero to seven years old you're in theta state like mm-hmm. you're literally hypnotized you're not you're mm-hmm. not you're not there to challenge any ideas that's why santa claus is so real right and then later on you find out santa claus isn't real and you're like it's paradigm shifting because you right. you were like i thought this was the <laughs> thing. Like, everybody yeah. tricked me <laughs> yeah, like, and there's, there's no trickery to be had it's like you're not being tricked you're just being told something yeah you don't realize it's a trick you don't realize there's anything going on with it it's a um, like as you so there's a lot of ideas not just like the Santa Claus thing there's a lot of ideas that get in around there right. and you know they're bad ideas they're, or they're they're not ideas that serve you so it's like you you have a parent that's that's a uh, narcissistic you have a parent that's passive aggressive right. well you learn those exact same things and the way that they talk and they think you hear that and you start you develop the way that you think and the way that you talk mm-hmm. based on what you're learning it's not you know you're not loaded with anything you're mm-hmm. afraid of you're afraid of uh, loud noises and falling when you're a baby. That's it. Mm-hmm. Everything else you learn to like, mm-hmm. love, hate, whatever, it's through people and experiences. So it's like there are lots of that ego that we were just talking about, like a lot of that chatter that comes in there that, that says, oh, you don't have the money, you don't, like somebody told you that. If you never were told that you didn't have the money to do something, you would never know that you didn't have the money because no, like, what you don't know, yeah, you don't know. So right. it's like 
those things that, that give you that take back away from you that you're like I want to go forward and those things that take back away from you like that's ego and you learn that shit yeah the stuff that's coming in from here it's like that's not ego that's that's you're getting a message like an external message that's from you to you to do something with mm -hmm. but the ego is not from you too like it, it kind of is yeah. but it's but it's also like it's working against you because it learned from so many other people <clears throat> where this thing isn't necessarily learning from other people this thing just kind of knows the path and is trying to communicate Oh, it's like, um, you know, the thoughts of like, well, I can teach yoga, but like, what would people think of me? Cause I don't know enough or, you know, it will be like a judge people will judge me. But in reality, you know, people are going to connect to you more and you're going to need be the person that they need because you're, you are being vulnerable in our vulnerability. Right. We are connecting to more people by just being human and sharing and being where we're at. It's not everybody's person. You're so right. Yeah. You're so right. I get that all the time. I like, do when, I, when I share, the, you know, like some of the traumas and stuff that I've gone through, Absolutely. and when I'm vulnerable enough to share those, I get I get such good feedback. Mm -hmm. You know, really good feedback. Think like about, like, I think about the things that I watch and that I'm interested in. It's when people are, they, they are real and vulnerable and they mm -hmm. share that shit. You know? Well, and they yeah. share, like, when I'm vulnerable, yeah. they share mm -hmm. back vulnerability. And it's like it's and it's like nothing I've ever seen because I've it's never real. been brave enough to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and tell people like what's you know what I've gone through. And once once I got to a space where I was comfortable with you know I was like figured out all this stuff and was comfortable with it. It was every time I share every time I share mm -hmm. I was like somebody I've had a couple people and they're like dude mm -hmm. I have never heard anybody talk like that. Like, yeah, I got to tell you about this. Right. And I have that happen constantly. It's a ripple effect. You're you're more. helping. Well, you're when helping they just share back at such a deep level, yeah. like when when they hear depth coming from me mm -hmm. they feel comfortable enough to share mm -hmm. depth back so it's like if you and it probably you can try this shit for yourselves it's like it's if you have deep conversations that are meaningful to people that help people understand what's going on around them you know if you're, if you're in a place where you, where you feel like you have an understanding share that with people and share that depth of like how you thought and how you've tried to like understand all this stuff and people will respond to that and if you if you have you know traumas that you've gotten through and you've learned from and you're able to share because they're they don't hurt you anymore is once you kind of fix them, once you understand what, what was going on and how other people might have been thinking in certain situations and you're able to go, oh, I see how they were acting, I see what I did. Like once you get to that space inside of yourself, you can share with people because you understand what you've gone through and you can help them. Mm -hmm. And they're going to like take what you've gone through and try to apply that to themselves because they're like, oh, you came out of this, you came out the other side feeling better, figuring things out. Like, yeah. wonder if I could do that. And then, yeah. they, then before you know it, they're asking questions about their own situations. That's like the art of storytelling, you know, and, and it's such a healing practice because it creates unity and shared experiences where, you know, when we go about into our lives with the programming that, like you're saying, we came into, like how the world kind of programmed part of our ego, mm -hmm. you know, coming into that, it seems like sharing those stories, you know, brings us back to that kind of unity and connectedness because I feel like the other way, you know, there's so much separation mm -hmm. coming in, like programmed separation mm -hmm. as we enter and seeing ourselves as individuals. Which is what ego is, right? Like separation oh, from yes. spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. and if, if you think about ego, like ego is really, it's not there to, it's not trying to hurt you. It's just doing what no. it's been taught. Like, yeah. you, you know, if you've ever been driving yeah. and you like think about something different and as you're thinking about that other thing, you like pass by your exit in that moment, your, your awareness wasn't driving. Your awareness has shifted over here because you'd be in one place at one time, like thinking. So you could, you could think over here and be having your eyes open or you could be closing your eyes, mm -hmm. right? It kind of doesn't matter. Like when the awareness is inside, it's inside. And there's something else that like the sub, the subconscious <laughs> the subconscious mm -hmm. it takes over that driving it's been conditioned to do all right. kinds of things like it's conditioned to drive you know you've been driving it's been paying attention so it knows how you drive so when your awareness goes over here it's like in that moment where your subconscious is taking you it's taking you to where that thought originated so if mm -hmm. you would have autopiloted long enough you know you might end up you know in you know somewhere in north Nevada. North Dakota. You know what I mean? Yeah, North Dakota. You might end up in Virginia somewhere. It's like, it's, it's just, it, it's, but it's, you know, we typically don't autopilot that long to see what's happening. Yeah. But it's, uh, it, it's not there. The ego is not there to hurt us. It's there to ultimately protect us. Like, yes. it's always trying to protect us. That's why those, that you know, it, it yeah. takes in that idea of not having enough, enough money. Well, you got, it, that got, got that idea from somewhere and then it scared it enough to where it's like, okay, we got to make sure that we're not, we're never overspending. We're never, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want to run out of that resources, that, that energy. 
So it's like, it's, it's really there to, to protect us, but we have to unravel what it learned and how it learned right. and then decide if that serves us or not. You know, mm-hmm. should we always be cautious or should we throw caution to the wind sometimes? When should we do it? When shouldn't we do it? It's like, but you have to, if, if everybody around you is super cautious, you're all, you've only really learned being cautious. Like you got, now you have to step outside of that comfort zone and try things for yourself that seem like it's not like that. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like, yeah, like we were saying earlier, you can almost use it as a tool, like instead of it using you, mm-hmm. like you're saying, tuning into mm-hmm. that feeling, that excited feeling, that heart space mm-hmm. feeling is really like your soul feeling, your, you know, your spirit, your, your higher self, mm-hmm. like you're saying, your over consciousness, you know, the, the ultimate consciousness. Mm-hmm. And then we drop down into an ego to like individualize, but the, the, like we can use it as mm-hmm. a tool to, you know, guide ourselves mm-hmm. and study. And like you're, we were saying, maybe mm-hmm. it gets programmed. And so, so override it through tuning in. Yeah, <laughs> over get to used, override. Get used to what it feels like to like feel that feeling, like mm. listening to your higher self or spirit, and then discerning what's ego and what's that, and then right. going with. Yeah, and it's right. typically it's kind it's easiest to figure out the difference between the two things mm. because you know how you think. Mm-hmm. If something's coming through that's not quite this way that you normally think, and you're like. What is okay? Where's that coming from? Because mm-hmm. that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound like yeah. something I'd say to myself mm-hmm. normally. Yeah, it's like those are the you know those are the difference. You got to look for the subtlety, and you really got to tune in, like tune into the way you think. Yeah. That. Mm-hmm. you know, it's like a lot of people. Some people will say they like they can't sit still without music on, without some, doing something with their hands because mm-hmm. their brain starts kind of taking over, mm-hmm. and it you know the brain works against them, the ego works against them, and it, it brings up all these all these old thoughts and feelings, and we you know you kind of put those away and try to keep going it's like sit with yourself and listen so you because if you don't sit and listen you don't really know how you're Mm -hmm. thinking like you don't know really you're not going to see the differences until you tune into your own self your own ego and hear what it says and the way it's thinking and really evaluate it for yourself does it serve you does it not serve you but then you can hear other ideas coming in you can Mm -hmm. can hear when it's like oh that's not the way that i think but if you never know the way you think you're not going to be like it's going to be difficult yeah it's almost like the ego is a way of seeing yourself, like, you know, as we're a human being, the ego comes with it as a way to see yourself, mm-hmm. as a part of the God source, too. Like, like it's... it's well, it's showing you something. Yes, yeah. 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 So it is, it is like, in a way, that tool where, you know, we know we're observing our conversation right now, like, you know, it, it, part of that is coming through the ego, like mm-hmm. the awareness that I'm Dana you know um mm-hmm. interesting thought it, it, it is there was another thought i had about it and i i can't think about but so yeah like it can be and then and then it can be limiting like we're saying it can be expanding and then it can be limiting like it can help direct me to like get things done that i know i yeah. should probably get things done like uh, okay get off your ass like cause, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> i'll just like daydream all day in outer space like really easily but the ego will help me go okay but you know don't you want to manifest in your human life mm-hmm. too and so the ego will come in and and i'll feel like a piece of shit sometimes but so you know i feel like in a way maybe i should feel that to like motivate me mm-hmm. to like to to get off my butt and go do it. So in that way, like, I'm, like, grateful for my ego, you know. But then in another aspect, there was many, many years where I was, the ego attachment, like you're saying, was, like, a lot of the, a lot of programming that maybe, you know, wasn't really who I really was Mm -hmm. or my spirit, but I was looking out. It was the other part of my ego where I was, I'm I'm able to look at myself, but you're also able to look at everything else Mm -hmm. around you as a separation and trying to find that connection so you're you're you know should, am i supposed to be like that am i supposed to be like mm-hmm. that oh am i supposed to do this or not that like mm-hmm. you know you're seeing all these things through your ego too should i be like that do i do it like that way or how you know how do you fit in when you're an adolescent and you know you're trying to dress like this a lot and of identify like that. that yeah yeah well that's part of that identify. learning process is you see all these things and you see like you know at school you see a different set of, a totally different set of things at school than you see at home. 
like your parents are, you know, they're not typically acting like kids. They're not acting like, you know, if you're in the, the second, third grade or whatever, they're not acting like second or third graders. So you'd see a whole other perspective when you go to school and the way other people act. And they're like, you're, you're at the same time, like your brain is still developing zero to seven. Right. It's in theta, seven to 13. It's, there's like, it's in another state where it's not quite as, it's not being programmed as much, but it, it challenges certain things along the way. Like that Santa Claus idea. Uh, if you, you know, when you get to be nine, 10 years old, you learn that Santa Claus isn't real. And then like you hadn't put together the tooth fairy, you start thinking about that and you're like, wait a second. You know what I mean? And the Easter bunny where you had like, you, you made the, the, you figured out Santa, but you didn't think about the other things because those are so programmed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's untangling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny to watch my son go through that. It's like, <laughs> like we're still telling him they're Santa Claus, but you know he lost teeth recently, and you know I think he pretty much knows there's no teeth for him, but I still kind of act like there's one, yeah. give him money. So it's like a funny, it's a weird, weird stage. Stuff. Yeah, because like he just turned nine, mm -hmm. so he is coming right from that stage mm -hmm. into that like really more of an individualized. Mm -hmm state where he is like wait a minute <laughs> yeah let me put that together what's up with my parents <laughs> and who are they really and what are they teaching me well this is kind of funny for me so when i was like five years old somebody on the school bus told me santa claus wasn't real i go home and i ask my mom and she tells me the truth that it's that he's not real but i literally because i was i was still being like i was in that theta state time frame mm -hmm. right. over the next couple of years i, f I forgot <laughs> Like, I forgot that the Santa Claus wasn't real, and I would, I would catch myself, like, in these moments, oh, wow. like, like fully in the magic moment. And then sometimes I would catch, I'd also be like, oh, wait a minute, this is mom and dad. And I, then, I, like, so this is what was funny. So I found out at five. Now, when I'm, like, seven years old, I want to say, we had, I had uh, four other siblings, and uh, the, I got up at, like, five o'clock in the morning on Easter morning, and I looked at all the baskets, and everybody had, like, one decent thing in it and there's some candy mm -hmm. and all that stuff so I went through and rearranged the baskets and I put everything in my in my basket <laughs> I, I gave them candy and stuff all the good toys I put them all in my basket and then uh then I went back to bed wow. and, I came, and I came back out and like you know everybody's up and I came back out and I'm looking at my basket and my mom goes that's not how those work and I'm like how does she know and then I then I, then I was like oh shit she's ah I was like She's the Easter Bunny. Oh shit! I was wow. like, that's right. That's how that that's how what much your brain. Is. That's you know, like, wild. Yeah, that the, that theta state thing. You can slip right out of you know something. You just slip right out of it because it's like in my family. My I still have two younger sisters, mm -hmm. so Santa Claus is still real for them. So we had it. Like my mom said, you you can't tell your like you know this has got to stay to you and your sisters still believe. So I was like, and so I just like, I f somehow I, I just forget and find myself back in that space of believing again and then having to, every now and again, pull myself out. That Easter Bunny thing really, fun, no. really, really cracked me. <laughs> when I got caught doing that, I was like, oh God, I got to remember this next time. This is really yes. important. So, so we caught up with Alethea a little bit and, um, we're rounding, we're rounding it all around. We were talking about ego for a little bit. And um, so what's going, we're catching up with you now, DJ, what's going on? Um, so I've been, us? I've been getting really into binary beats and I got some software and I learned how to make binary beats and what binary beats are. Oh, is, that was my next question. <laughs> so yeah, there, it's also called hemisync um, where you have the, there's two hemispheres in your brain and they cycle. And what you do with, with binary beats or hemisync is you'll tune, you'll have one frequency in one ear. So let's say you have 100, 100 uh, hertz in one ear. And then the other ear is like 105 hertz. While you're hearing, like it's your eyes, if you were to move on the color scale one, one shade over, um, your eyes, it's not enough to see. It looks like the same color. But if you were to do the same thing on the hearing scale, your ears would pick it up. Mm -hmm. Your ears are very wow. sensitive. Um, so your what happens when you when you put it you, and you got to use these with headphones. So when you put them on, um, you have two different frequencies, and your brain kind of goes, "Hey, are you hearing what I'm hearing?" And it goes back and forth. And what it does is it t it takes the difference in the two frequencies. It doesn't add them together. It takes the difference. So 100, 105. Now it gives you it gives you um, a brainwave activity of five revolutions per second, right? And that's a really slow state. Four to seven revolutions per second. That's theta state. And that's where you can do a lot of really good manifesting. You do mm -hmm. a lot of really good meditations. So I made up, I've got like a, a couple of different um, theta that are doing for theta state. 
and I'm going to be making other ones for alpha state for the for the different frequencies and brainwave um, what do we call it, the sinks mm -hmm. that uh, so you can so you can if you want to get into like that flow state I'm gonna make some for flow state right now I've been focused on data state and they've gotten a really good response these stressed. are all uploaded on our YouTube page and yeah, people yeah. can just listen to them yeah you can just you can click on it listen to mm -hmm. it I have a, there's a there's a spot on there that's uh, sound bath and meditation if you look in that that spot on the page you can, you'll find all that stuff listed out there um, so I've gotten really into that and I've been getting really good results like listening to it myself mm -hmm. like you can in that theta state It feels like right between awake and asleep and I like I get myself there and I'll, I'll actually fade off to sleep a little bit And I'll feel myself pull out of it. Mm -hmm. and it's like getting yourself used to when you're pulling out of it That's theta mm -hmm. like when you're pulling out of sleep. That's theta. It's really moving slow And then that's when you can you know you want to manifest you want to you want to uh, connect to your younger self mm -hmm. You want to talk to a different mm -hmm. life you want to mm -hmm. talk to you know because everything is happening at least the way that I understand it. Everything is happening at a present moment only. Everything. Past right. lives, future lives, all, all that stuff is happening at a present right. moment. Once you pass the present moment, like that one just passed, now it's just a memory in the back of our head. And anything else we're doing, we're projecting and manifesting. We're thinking about a future. Yeah. But this moment is all that goes by. Right. You are, you know, because of like quantum entanglement, you're entangled with your past lives, your future lives, your younger self, your older self. It's like, you know, this idea of where, where do ideas come from? What if, what if the ideas just come from yourself in different moments of, of the present moment, mm -hmm. different parts of the present mm -hmm. moment? Um, and what if you just have a receptor for your own ideas? You know, I was saying before that the, the subconscious, it believes it's alone. Like, why would it think it's alone? It, it's right about everything else, but it's it thinks it's alone and we're going, ah, that's not real. Well, everybody looks so real to us. It doesn't feel like we're alone. It's quite possible we are alone. It's quite possible this is like our own little silo that we're in and... You guys could be in your own little silos and you doing your own thing. And like the conversations we have aren't even this, like I'm having one conversation that is just for me. Like, you know, this is just giving me back these ideas. And you may be hearing something completely different. Who knows? Like, I, I have no idea how these ex exchanges I feel like I've had conversations with people like that. Before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, the, let me, so the binary beats in the way that it syncs up the brain. That's what creates the theta state. Yeah, that's it's the way that the brain is. You know, so when you sleep, you go you go through like five five different cycles of sleep. Like you have yeah. REM sleep, and that's that's one frequency or not one frequency, but one uh, amount of like hertz revolutions per second. Okay. Um, and it goes up like your brain. If, if I'm right, if it can go from you know like one revolution per second all the way up to like 30,000 revolutions per second. Wow. So you can like, there, there, and these, there's different states that come with, with these different areas. So you can, yeah, I, I programmed those in and then you listen to those and that's why you kind of went down that rabbit hole a little mm -hmm. bit with all that's the things so that you can do with that in that area. It's, um, okay, so is this something that's like people that want to get into meditation but aren't doing it yet? Is this something I would assume that it would be really good for them to just put on the headphones? And do it. I think it's amazing. And like, like are we gonna be astral projecting if they like kind of all? <laughs> where are they gonna go? Also, this... like I thought, wow, I've been like lately. I, I my favorite place to take clients when I work on them doing a massage is like that place in between asleep and awake. Mm. Even my last client, I did right before I came here, they always say to me like, oh, it's in this really weird place where I don't know if I was asleep or awake. Mm. And I'm like, so interesting. And wouldn't it be cool to do a freaking binary beats massage where you? Like headphone them up. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you give yourself, it only takes about you know yeah, when your your brain is listening to these beats. And like I said, like the beats are they're really low. The frequencies are really low. It's just enough to where your ears can hear them. You're not like consciously really hearing it. Like you can kind of it kind of makes that a little bit of a warbly no yeah. noise. But it's mm -hmm. but I put it underneath. Like I put a Olivia sound bath up when her and Ian did the sound bath. I recorded that and then I put the. The different frequencies under that really, oh, really okay. low that's tones. A, that's you don't, cool. Yeah, you don't really hear it. And then I have a I have another like, and then the other one is kind of the same thing. It's just at a really low frequency that you can't really hear, but your brain your your brain is picking up, and that's what it's making the two hemispheres like sync up, and then mm -hmm. it starts rotating. Like that. So so, so when people crazy. are doing it, that that's why it's better in a, in yeah. headphones. So yeah, they can actually hear. Yeah, if you did the if you did that same thing on like a, just a regular speaker. The sound dissipates like it, it all runs oh. together. But when the sound's going straight in, that your your brain can pick so it up. So earbuds, earbuds also. Work. Yep, earbuds, it's headphones. It's supposed to be two different frequencies. Yeah, so I I, I do one at a hundred at a hundred hertz and oh. one at one hundred and five hertz, mm -hmm. and then your brain picks up the difference between them, which is five hertz. Four to seven is theta state. So anywhere on that in that That's range great. is that theta area. And if you just listen to them for like a few, you get. 
three to five That's minutes. So like I can fall into the theta state. I mm -hmm. practice a lot, but I can fall into theta state within within a couple minutes usually. Uh, the longest it's taking me is like three to five minutes. But if you just sit there and listen, like just hear the noises that are coming out of the headphones, feel the different places that vibrates your head because it's you know there's sound bowl, there's singing bowls mm -hmm. and you can like it, you have a vibration in there. Feel just feel those things. Just try to connect with like mm -hmm. what that feels like, and then before you know it, your brain is just automatically rolling in that area. Mm -hmm. But if you start thinking about yeah. all these other different things, like don't try to think about it. just you know mm -hmm. you're trying to clear yourself and be in just one space. Just feel the things that are going on in your brain, or if you want to focus on your breath, you can do that. Let everything fall off. Let the thoughts yeah, just, fall and, off. Yeah, and as if something comes in, like <clears throat> what I do is I'll, I like literally imagining that thought going out this way, like like going away from me, and then I just kind of turn away from it. And it fades off, and then nothing. Mm -hmm. And I just try to stay there and just, just feel the noises, because I'm not really thinking about anything. Just, oh, I feel that, I feel that. Wow. It's just like mm -hmm. your breath. Oh, I feel that breath going in there. I feel it coming out here. Mm -hmm. I feel it going all the way down to my lungs. Like, you can do whatever you want. Just it, mostly try not to think about it. Just, just feel, just feel, observe, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll slip into that theta state real fast, like within within a five minutes, typically, um, sometimes sooner. And once you're in there, like, you, you know, read about the different things you can do in theta state. It's not, you know, there's so much you can do there. You can... You can literally take that that space and reprogram your subconscious conscious um <clears throat> it's a like it's a magical state to be in there's yeah. and there's other states that are really good like people talk about when they take like mushrooms and being in a flow state where everything just it feels good like you mm -hmm. can and i'm gonna be yeah. making uh binary beats that do that do cool. that as well so uh, you can like, if cool. you want to work you can put them on for you know 10 minutes get your brain kind of like working right there and then dig in Oh wow! And you can get into a so it's like a you can use brain that. energizer. <laughs> yes, I yeah. can use that to energize my brain to not be yeah to not be brain lazy. Yeah. So and uh, Alethea and Ian are actually going to make some more music this week. Yeah, is the plan. And so within the next week, I'll have spirit some has more. spoken. <laughs> yeah. So within spirit the next week or so, spoken. I'll have I'll have more music to play with, and then we can put different different binary beats over it, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, do our thing. So that's, that's, that's exciting, a, you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really exciting. I love it. I gotta yeah. say, I was listening to some of the sound healing from that day, and I, I was like, what did, did he put that shaker in there? But I think it was you. Oh. And that was like my favorite part of the I feel like I, I need some shaker action. In I would the, love to add some shaker. Thank you. I think you. that would be cool. I, I really mean, liked it. I've been playing with my shaker. Yeah, I'm so glad. Yeah. I've been playing with it lately. Yeah, yeah. I did a little meditation with my shaker out in a fairy portal that I discovered in my backyard. I was like, wait a minute. On Thanksgiving morning, I was like, I love you. I, didn't. I was like, I didn't realize this was a fairy portal. <laughs> I, of course, I found it on Thanksgiving. So I got my shaker and did some blessings and prayers. And it was so fun. And then, yeah, and then I watched it. I got really into the binary beads mm -hmm. with the crystal bowls and the sound frequency with Ian that you posted. And I was asking DJ all these questions about it. I was like, DJ, what'd you do? What is this? What are the, all the questions? And so I was like, oh, I got to check it out. And I'm like, oh, my shaker was snuck in there. I was like, that's kind of fun. Yeah. So I'm glad you know. I did. I really liked it. <laughs> yeah, that's been my fun thing. My rabbit hole's been that shaken. What, and, um, really so what have you been up to? <laughs> shaken. Shaking, using that shaker around, <laughs> you know, just like really deep thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, just feeling like the healing works becoming more and more intensified. I think yeah. has been my biggest. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. What like what we're doing is what's going on. Family life is what's going on. Um, really working to bring that heart centered energy to everything that we're doing and that I'm doing, but uh, uh, definitely um, just really into observing the intensification of energy that's been coming through lately with all of the healing sessions that we've been doing. It's, it's pretty, it's been pretty miraculous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just focusing on stepping aside, like, like as part of that ego conversation, you know, the awareness of myself is like the individual, like really focusing on just getting out of the way to let what needs to come through for mm -hmm. the, you know, the individual or the collective as far as healing energy messages, mm -hmm. whatever wants to come through, yeah. come through. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding, yeah, people are 
having their own, be able to hear their own messages, mm -hmm. like, like getting into that beta state mm -hmm. and, you know, that in between, like you guys are talking about, like, cause ultimately like we all are able to, you know, and you, any of us isn't more special than anybody else because we're into like healing mm -hmm. and helping people. It's like, everybody mm -hmm. can be the channel. Everybody can mm -hmm. be the, you can always mm -hmm. connect. But um, mm. I don't know. Sometimes so we need each other. Yeah, we, we need each other. To DJ and I were talking about. It. He's like giving me all these downloaded messages the other day and advice. I was like, DJ, you know. And he's like, How come I can't hear it for myself? You know, like yeah. Sometimes we just yeah. need each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The, um, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had something I wanted to say and then it just fucking. It'll come back. Me. Sorry. It'll come back. <laughs> Sometimes we just need. Um, Others help us hold that space, I yeah. feel like, you know, like you're saying, the noise, like mm -hmm. getting through our own noise, you know, and then purposely taking that time out to ground into your body mm -hmm. through whatever, you know, medium that is, through sound, through your physical body, through movement, mm -hmm. through breath, mm -hmm. you know, grounding through that and then tuning in to um, aligning that so you can hear the messages mm -hmm. For yourself but yeah like you're saying it's yeah what I was going to talk about was the energy so mm -hmm. you're talking about that, that, that exchange yeah. of energy and it's like right. that's that's all that that's all I think is happening like like the, the channel messages you're just interpreting energy from the okay. soul from the guides mm -hmm. and you know inter interpreting energy like we all do it we just don't realize it like when even if you're sitting in a crowded room talking to somebody and then the first place you just glance up and the first place you look somebody's looking back at you you don't realize, you think it's coincidence, but you don't realize in that moment, like you've got the receptors in your brain, mm -hmm. like it picks up energy. You just don't, it doesn't like give you, it doesn't always give you goosebumps like some things do. So you don't recognize it as something different. You just think you glanced up. But it's always there. It's always there. And that like that ability to interpret that energy is just tuning in, tuning in, listening and feeling for that energy and like getting used to what that feels like. So you can kind of figure out and it's kind of, it's kind of like differentiating the ego thoughts from the soul thoughts. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, knowing and, and feeling that you're, okay, this is something else coming in. This is, mm -hmm. a, this is something. And I, I mean, it happens for me to me often where it's like, mm -hmm. where I sit there and start thinking about something and it's like an answer comes through and I'm like, how did, like that can't be, I didn't know the answer. How, mm -hmm. did, how did that come through? And it's like, it's, you know, wherever it comes from, it's a, but it's just an interpretation of energy. So mm -hmm. what you guys are saying, like, like it's not, it's really not that, that special a thing. We all have the ability to interpret energy. We all have the ability mm -hmm. to flow energy. Like where your attention goes, that's where your energy flows. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about sending somebody bad energy, then you're sending them bad energy. Mm -hmm. If you think about sending somebody good energy, then you're sending them good energy. And it doesn't matter how far they are. It doesn't matter if there's walls between you. My energy goes through fucking everything. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a te I look at it like if this is, if this is a simulation, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at like, not to go too far down the rabbit hole, but if you look at how atoms, how atoms act, they like, they come in and out of existence and that energy that they come in and out of, there, there's energy fucking everywhere. Right. Like thoughts, thoughts are energy. Thoughts mm -hmm. are energy. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it all, you know, so it's like, mm -hmm. if you think about how, just how they come in and out of existence, it's like mm -hmm. this, that sounds like a, a simulation. Yeah. It sounds like it's like, you know, <clears throat> when they did like the double slit test. And they figured out as atoms act differently when they're being observed and when they're not. And it's like, and we are the observers. We're the measuring devices in this case. Like we're the, the like the computers within the, the overall mm -hmm. program or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And it's like, you know, those having or being able to understand that that's like, it's, it's, it's like a technology that we're in. It's like a simulation that we're in. It doesn't matter that it, that it is or it isn't. It still feels the same pretty much to all of us. It's like, oh, this is a simulation. It doesn't change how you yeah. feel. Like mm -hmm. it ne I never changed how I felt, but it gives me the idea that it's like, well, if it's a simulation, this is like, and, and your thoughts are kind of projecting the simulation. The way that you think, it gives you more of what you think about. So if you're always thinking about garbage, it's like you're going to get garbage. If you're thinking about good things, think about healing, thinking about helping, you're going to have more opportunities to get healing because that's kind of how the brain works. It brings itself all being projected out of the subconscious. You know, it comes in through the eyes, goes to the back of the brain, and something else gets projected out. But all we're really seeing is light waves bouncing off of particles. And then those that comes in through the eyes and it gets spit out as an image that we somehow we all yeah. like we all agree that this is what we see we look at the way we see a, a closet we see a house we see it's like we, we agree on that but then you get inside of that the subjective nature nature of it is nine tenths of your thoughts make up your beliefs you know that's so whatever you're thinking that that's that's what you're believing in your your mind because it comes in this way and it's like projecting something else out 
you know, what ha what's happening within that objective reality, that one-tenth we all agree on, is nine-tenths of it is whatever's happening for you subjectively. If this is a simulation, then you have, you have the ability to change the way you think and watch how the world around you thinks or how the mm -hmm. world around you reacts. Like you're always, you're always talking, you're always thinking to yourself how you're, how you're running into shitty people and they're giving you shitty experiences and they always have a bad point of view and they're negative. Look at how you're thinking. Like yeah. just look in the mirror yeah. for a second and listen to how you think about it, how you think to yourself and you'll notice the similarities and yeah. you're like, oh, I'm like, so then you change them, change the thoughts. Well, that's what makes it matter. The, the, the simulation, if that's what it is, that's what makes it really interesting because it's just how you think is what's, you're getting more mm -hmm. of what you think into your life. So if you can change that, that's the that, huge that, part of it. That's you can manipulate the simulation, like you can yeah. control it a little bit more. Yeah. And then if you realize that it's a simulator or that it's technology that we're dealing with, well, that makes energy technology too. Energy is just technology. Yeah. We all have the ability well, to. What's, to yeah. What's interesting is like what I'm really finding is, is I'm saying it's intensifying. I'm I'm noticing like a a direct correlation to like if that person is already like a really high vibrational person like the amount of energy that gets reflected back to them is like huge it's yeah. so intense and it's so quick and the more dense they are and, and for whatever reason it is for thoughts for whatever Low patterns vibration. yeah the lower the denser the, it, it's it's mm -hmm. less activated like i can still activate but it's a lot less when you're um working on people are you giving people messages just like kind of regularly Sometimes. or are you kind of like feeling them out do you ask them or um... you know what it depends on if it's like really feeling necessary to yeah. like verbalize it but a lot of times they'll also just get it for themselves mm -hmm. they're like oh my god my higher self told me during mm -hmm. this that 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 they got their own message for themselves that's cool and sometimes they'll just add some things that, yeah so yeah and it, yeah and like what i mean because you're you've been a massage therapist a long time but now you're doing like so much different work with it yeah. is it something that you see like you going into just doing specifically these kind of treatments for people where it's like all encompassing because yeah. my massages have changed a lot right. and i'm kind of feeling that in a different word different with how we work on people but it's interesting that it's yeah. like coming into this new i feel that's why i feel like drawn to like work with you because it's like i feel like we're all going to this like new yeah. Way of like receiving body work and yes. nice. Yeah. Well, you you've been yeah. incorporating a lot more sound bowls in your work, Tons. Lately, right? Yeah. Where it's like and more been... yeah, it's more of a sound session. It's and... more of a session than it is a specific yeah. like massage or body yeah. work or this or that. It's a it's a session. And mine are um, you know, and I've been doing energy work for a really long time. Um, but there has always been um, like blocks within me on myself that has been like, I'm not good enough to do this. Or like, right. I, I don't have this, like, I'm not that kind of healer. I'm not this type of person, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But lately, especially in the last like year when I gave up booze and I don't know, shit's, I guess my neurons are fire. I don't know. <laughs> but I've been feeling like, oh, like I just, or and I just have to listen to this. I just have to listen to this and let it come through. Or, and, and then, like when I feel like I need to say something now, I'm just saying it. Right. And it's been like something that they really needed to hear wow. every time. And I'm like, this is, I'm going into that too. And I'm like, wow, this is, it's bigger than us. You're an open channel. Yeah. Right. It yeah. is bigger. And I think it's needed. It's like, they're mm -hmm. like, okay, we need people to, you know, we, the shift that's happening, mm -hmm. like we were talking about earlier, like, you know, whoever is becoming an open channel, like DJ is an open channel, mm -hmm. and we've become an open channel because we're vibrating at a higher, mm -hmm. through manipulating all of these ideas that we've been talking about through the programming of your thoughts and the sound healing mm -hmm. and all these different things that we're doing. We've, you know, been focusing on that in our own lives, so we've become this high vibrational channel mm -hmm. for it, as well as like a lot of other yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, so and everybody can be. We're excited yeah. to help activate and help everyone else, which is, I think, why we ended up coming together too. Mm -hmm. You know, through it all. Yeah. yeah. Any, well, we have, we have any... some different ideas, and it's fun to talk about them. I yeah. think Because when we bounce them off of each other, we're like, oh, and light bulbs go off, and I feel like. I we can go down a million down. rabbit holes. Every time. I feel like every conversation with DJ is a rabbit hole. And also, I'm friends with Dana because she finds fairy pearls in her yard on Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. I didn't even realize. I kind of did, but I didn't. So were they having Thanksgiving dinner? Were they like fairy, like having tiny? It's a fairy portal. It's a fairy portal party. Did they know it was Thanksgiving? Was it Thanksgiving there too? 
Um, you know what? I think uh, they felt like it was a day of, of, of families coming together, that energy, you know, that, yeah, the spirit of it, you know, anyway, like almost a ceasefire, hopefully, for the day, but, um, yeah, so anything to close out with? You have a rabbit hole? Yeah, so I went, uh, I've been dealing with heartburn pretty pretty bad like it, it got really bad like where i i went in and had like um <clears throat> had a ct scan and we had a lot of stuff and it was like they didn't nothing came back like real negative it was just like something is going in that I'm, i've got an allergy to or something that's like causing a lot of, so i've been dealing with that and the way i've mostly been dealing with it i've been trying to cut out different things to see what it is and it's like a little bit of everything <laughs> like it, it didn't seem to matter what i cut out it was, mm. it was i was still having, having problems mm. then uh a couple of weeks ago, I was listening to a guy named uh, Gary Brecka on Rogan's podcast. And I was also saying a week or so, maybe yeah, maybe ten days before that, I found another doctor. I can't remember his name now, but he was he's been saying this stuff since like the '90s. And then I listened to Gary Brecka, who says it, who repeats almost the same exact stuff, but you know it's it's in the current day. And basically, what they what they were saying is we need there's like 92 essential minerals and like there's fatty acids that we have that our body needs to take in, mm -hmm. and that we methylate these things. Which methylation is like the way the guy the way that he put it was it was like pulling crude oil out of the ground, but you can't put crude oil into your car. You got to you got to refine it. It's got to go through a process to be turned into gasoline. Your food does the same thing. Nothing goes in wholly and is just used like that by the body. It's kind of methylated into something else. And we have, all of us have some, like there's something that we're deficient in. And like he was mm. saying that diseases, where we think they're genetic diseases, he says it's not really a genetic disease. He said what it is, is you have, you have the inability to methylate certain minerals. And when you, don't, when you can't methylate those, you get a buildup of those minerals. And that, that buildup of those minerals not being able to be methylated, that, that becomes, well, it, it turns into something different. It affects, it affects all kinds of different things. And it's like there was... Um, he was talking about anxiety. He said, if your anxiety doesn't come from something that happened, that would be, make sense for anxiety to trigger something, that if you just have, you just, your thoughts just kind of take off on you and it turns into this anxiety, he's like, that's, more, that's typically due to food. He's like, that's due to what you're taking in and you can't methylate stuff that you're taking in. So it builds up and that buildup causes this, which causes that. And before you know it, it's like, it goes up to the brain and it's causing, you know, lots of, lots of uh, crazy thoughts that'll go through your brain. It's like, um, there's also some, some ADHD and some other, um, depression and some of these things like they're, they're tied to your foods. It's like, if there's not something major that you can't point out something major, it just kind of comes on. If it just kind of comes on, it's not usually like a, like having some kind of traumatic experience that causes you to have the anxiety or, you know, whatever you're dealing with. And then the other thing that I, that I found that was absolutely fascinating listening to him was he said that most of us have, uh, well, I've had kidney stones like five I've had them three different times. The last time I had them, I, I passed like five kidney stones over the course wow, of two my weeks. God. It was really bad. And he's saying he was saying that kidney stones are caused by a lack of sodium. He says most of us yeah. are sodium deficient. And we're told that we shouldn't be, yeah. we shouldn't be having salt. Right. So um, what he said the salt to take is like not table salt and not like pink Himalayan because he, pink Himalayan, Himalayan salt is uh, it's got heavy metals in it. But oh. there's Celtic sea salt, mm, which has cool. like. 82 of the minerals or 62 of the minerals that you need anyways okay. and instead just take a little take a, just a little bit of salt just a tiny amount and put it on your tongue or under your tongue before you drink your water and you know you should be drinking water i've actually heard that before Why my, my heartburn salt? went away overnight hmm. literally i had i had something that i knew would be heartburnish and i was like oh boy i'm gonna have to take some tongues tonight didn't come on overnight. Wow. And so every day, and it's like, I, and I haven't been really, I haven't been, been doing the salt eight times a day. I've been doing the salt like, like two, maybe three, where it's like every time I drink water, it's like, I don't want to go downstairs and get, mm -hmm. so, and I, and it doesn't You need a salt that. fanny pack. I know, right? <laughs> a, little, a little salt dispenser. <laughs> so you just do like a dab of salt Dude, it's and like put it I, on your tongue? I just get my tongue, like lick my tongue and just take a little bit, whatever comes on there. Uh -huh. so, honestly, I don't, you don't even need that much. I was like, I, I probably get more, mm -hmm. but that salt it does two things it's, it uh it's part of it's it's the reason for your heartburn is because it's the, the salt helps create the acid and you don't have you cutting salt out so you're limiting the acid that you can create and then you're, you're taking oh. in food that it can't break it down so it kind of like turns into this heartburn feeling mm -hmm. and also kidney stones it's the reason mm -hmm. he's, he's like i've never had anybody heard anybody say the reason you get kidney stones is this 
that have always heard you don't know is well, people blame it on calcium because calcium is in the kidney stones. But the, cal the reason the calcium is in the kidney, kidney stones is because of lack of, a, of sodium. And I, yeah. like, so not only have I dealt with kidney stones, but then heartburn comes on. And, like, I'm so curious. I mean, That's I don't so want awesome. another kidney stone, but no. I feel like it's, like, I might have found start... the answer. Yeah. It, but I don't have the feedback. Like, my heartburn gave me the feedback where I was, like, right really stopped. Mm -hmm. I was, like, That's really salt. awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Thank you for I need to get. That. I need to get some Celtic. Public service enough. <laughs> you know the other thing. There's there's a uh, there's a company. I, I found a company that has in a liquid form and in a pill form. You take the liquid and take the pill, and it's like for every hundred pounds that you weigh, you put one ounce. So for me, it's like one and three quarter ounces or so. And uh, I take that each day, and I take the mm -hmm. pill, and that's supposed to give you all the nutrients. And this is this is methyl. This the ingredients are methylated already. So your body can take them, take them as it comes in. So it's like, you, you don't have the issue with, with methylation. You, I'm sorry, if you, if you don't have, uh, if you have an issue with methylation, those are, all those nutrients are methylated already. So you'd be able, be able to take them in. And if, you, if you're curious about what you can and can't methylate, there's a test that he gives. I think it's, he does it on his website. There's other people that do it too. Um, but it's a test that's like a cheek swab and it's a gene test. It's not a blood test, mm -hmm. right? So it's a gene test. And he can say that you do this once in your life and you'll know forever what you can't methylate, I what minerals you, you can't methylate. Uh, he says, and then cool. you supplement for what you can't methylate versus supplementing for supplementation sake. Uh, like it's, yeah, he really breaks it down. The what's guy, his the guy website? Is, uh, I don't know what his website is. His oh. name is Gary Brecca. Gary Brecca. I think it's actually, I think his, his website is like 10 X. 10x nutrition or 10x health. How do you spell his last name? B R E C K C K A. Okay, Brecca, just Brecca. like it sounds. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that guy was that guy was amazing. Like that was cool. I was cool. so informational. That it's, and I love that kind of stuff. So I was, I went like everything he was saying. I went and got the nutrients mm -hmm. he was saying again. I like I was yeah. like Jesus. I gotta have like I, this is this is probably part of my problem. Yeah. Like, what's it? I'm not getting. And the other thing is, is like when we get raw foods out of the earth, they're because of monocrop agriculture. Like the, we're getting even a fraction of the nutrients we mm -hmm. think we're getting because it's been all the nutrients has been sucked out of the mm -hmm. ground. Yeah. Like so, you're you're missing what what you think you'd be getting from eating good foods. You're not getting it. Like you're getting just there's little pieces of it. So it's like you almost have to supplement for some of this stuff mm -hmm. unless you have you know organic places where you can get into gardens and stuff right. like that. Where and um, yeah, that rabbit hole keeps going that's on. And a, on. So that's a I'm good. gonna I'm gonna stop there. There's, there's more. There's more. No, thank you for sharing that's that. Good. You that's know, that's good. probably gonna help a lot of people. I'm gonna start dosing Ian on yeah. some Celtic sea salt. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like so it's, it's really well, he's young. Yeah, you know, anything Same anything child. healing is on the table for us here yep. at Observing Consciousness. Mm -hmm. Anything yes. healing and and all that juicy stuff. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that we have to share today? Hmm. I, think I, think, I feel like that's pretty good. Yeah. Let's call it, let's let's call it a wrap. All right. So um, I don't know how that's gonna end it out, but does anybody want to say thank you and thank close it you? Out? Thank you for watching and subscribing and get some more binary beats from us and let us know what you want us to talk about. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. If there's something that you guys want to talk about, like if it's if it's spirituality, I, we can we'll, we know our way around it. We'll, we'll figure it or out. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah we'll, anything we'll, we'll, fun you want to contribute to the ongoing conversation, please yeah. do. And again, we want to just send everybody lots of love and light and good energy. And um, thank you all for sharing in this time with us. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs>